we just get out here. It's nice. He's got first thing in the morning here. Oh, I lost him. We've got just a, a great little breeze going, just perfect for a moving bait. So, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted it. I had like three bites on that one cast. <laughs> that heart tail tore it in half. They kept biting it. You want a moving bait. You want to catch those active fish because they're active in the morning. You don't need to throw a drop shot or a bottom bait. You want something that's moving. And the fish are obviously active. I've been getting a lot of bites. I mean, that thing hits the bottom and, and they're biting it. So you want something you can cover a lot of water to get those active fish. Now, if we fish here for a while and they stop biting, that's when you're, you're gonna wanna pull out a Texas rig or a jig, a drop shot, you know, to get those fish that have slowed down and started to hunker down. But right now, first thing, you always want, man, you, you always wanna throw an active bait. An active, you know, reaction bait will help you find fish. You know, always, especially in practice, if you're, if you're going out and you're fishing a new body of water and you don't know where the spots are, you need to throw a, a reaction bait to find the fish. And there's a lot of times in a tournament situation where I'll have found the fish with a reaction bait, but I end up catching the fish on a bottom bait. So let's say I find these fish with a crankbait or something else, and then I come back to those fish, and that's when I'll throw the jig or, you know, Senko or something to get those fish to bite after they slow down. But you find the bigger groups of fish with the reaction bait for sure. So typically what I do, with a swim bait is you really want to get a, a, a long cast with a swim bait. You know, the longer you keep that bait in the strike zone, the better. In this scenario right here, we have a point that runs out. So what I'm going to do is let that bait sink all the way to the bottom. I want that bait to be on or near the bottom. So I'm going to keep that to where if I stop it, it doesn't take but a second or two for it to hit the bottom. So that means I'm you know, within about three feet from the bottom and just keep a steady retrieve. I don't really snap it that often. I don't really change it that often. Every once in a while, I, I drop it just to make sure that it's close to the bottom and then just start whining again. Now, if it was open water and they're schooling fish, I would not let it sink to the bottom. I would cast it out and as soon as it hits the water, that's when you start whining. That's when you get in the suspended fish. But on a spot like this where the fish, I believe are gonna be close to the bottom, they're gonna be close to that point. That's a cast to the bottom, you know, cast, let it sink. Right now it's sinking, sinking. There, I just hit bottom and just start winding it. That's all you need to do, just cast and retrieve. But open water schooling fish, as soon as it hit, hits the water, start winding. When you're fishing structure, cast and let it hit the bottom and just do a medium retrieve. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> They're biting that thing every other handle turn they'd have it, man. Just nipping at it. Tie that one. Oh, that's still okay. A lot of fish on this point, man. They're they like that swim bait. I think I know where they're at now on the point. The swim bait is about done, but let's see if I can get another cast out of it. <clears throat> you know, normally with a swim bait, I throw a, a, a bigger rod, a longer one. This is actually an old Daiwa Zillion. It's the only eight footer I had, so I brought it. But a flipping stick is, is really good. The Tattoo Elite Ishman Row flip stick would be a great rod for it. Real, I'm going with the Tattoo 100. What I really would throw, but again, I, I flew down here, so I don't have all my tackle, is the Tattoo Elite. The Tattoo Elite rod. There we go. How big are you? The Tattoo Elite reel is actually designed for longer casting. That's what you want, man. The more you can keep that bait in the strike zone, the better. And normally what I'll throw is either 16 or 20 pound fluoro. Now we're in Mexico, so I went with 20 pound FC Sniper fluorocarbon. Just come on a heavier line. You know, at home I'd throw a 16 or a 20, just depends on where I am. Eight foot rod. Uh, this is a, a zillion rod, but man, just a flipping stick works great. So the Ishman Row Tattoo Elite flipping stick would be great. 
Tattoo Elite reel would be the better reel because it's designed for casting a long ways. Uh, the way they've changed that reel with the polarity of the weights in there, of the magnets, it really helps you cast farther. So the longer you can be in the strike zone, the better your odds are of actually catching a fish. So casting a long ways, having the long rod to make the cast, also having that long rod for when a fish bites, taking up line and getting that big sweep, your hook sets are better as well. <laughs> Jeez. Look how far that, that fish is out there, man. There's so much line on the end of that cast where that fish bit. That's what happens with the, the little one too. You know, a big eight foot rod, you can cast that thing such a long ways, but that helps to get, you know, to get that bite, to get more bites. You get all the way out there where that, those fish are and you keep the bait in the strike zone for longer. Six, three gear ratio. One's got on the sink. On the sink, he had it. I lost it. No, he's still on there. Just burning towards me. Thing is running to me the entire cast. There goes my heart tail. Your odds go way up with a swim bait um, versus a crankbait because it's a single hook. Plus they, they bite it, you know, with a, with a crankbait, a lot of times they slap at it. With a swim bait, they eat it, you know, so your odds go way up of actually landing the fish. The one thing I like a crankbait for is speed. A lot of times you can wind it really fast. That's the, the, the good thing about a crankbait, but again, you, you end up losing a lot of fish. So your odds of, of actually landing them on a swim bait are really good, especially in a tournament situation. You always wanna land those fish.